Hello and welcome to the Think Share. My name is Zach, here to bring to what I've been thinking about, sharing about, talking about, listening to, reading about that doesn't belong in math class to make you the goodest version of yourself. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe. And what I would like to do right now is hit you with a quick intro. Hold on a second. Wait for it. I still have not perfected this, but I'm committed. I, I want to show it. I want to show it. Where is it? Here we go. Come on. All right, never mind that. <clears throat> not worth the time. All right. So um, in the in the channel, uh, in, in the title of this video, I wanted to talk about um, how to start a gay straight alliance in your school. So I myself have not started a gay straight alliance, but a bunch of people have been asking me about how to do it or how they could go about it. And I wanted to address the question because there are so many people asking about it. So I want to first off sort of open up the discussion. Is there anyone watching that is interested in bringing a gay straight alliance to their school? And what kind of actions have you taken? And what kind of actions are um, you considering taking that you're sort of weighing? And I'll share with you in a moment a couple of the things. Holy crap, seven people watching already? That's sick. Um, so uh, I wanted to share a couple ideas with you that I just shared. So I just came over from, I've been streaming probably the past like half an hour, or, or I'm not sure how long, actually, on um, on my Zachary Watson channel. So for those of you that just came on from that one, thank you for coming back over to me. Um, and for those of you that are so are regular viewers from the ThinkShare, I just want to say uh, I'm really excited to share with you that I made a video back in March of 2017 um, why I had a pride flag in my classroom. And in the past 48 hours, it's got 15,000 views. So I, I don't really like saying things have been blowing up or on fire, but it's kind of hard to not say that. So um, actually, when I acknowledge Luna right now in the chat is one of the ones that was asking me a little bit about um, what could be done to start a, a GSA in their school. Um, thank you, Abstract Possibilities. I, I thought to myself, if we're going to be talking about GSA, I wanted to get about the most rainbowy thing that I have around my house right now, since I don't, I don't have a pride flag in my house, but I have one in my classroom. Um, if I had been thinking ahead, I probably should have just streamed from my classroom. That might have been kind of cool. Um, how's it going, Armani? Um, sorry, Miss Jessica. Congrats, 1K. Thank you, Alex. For those of you that don't know, Alex has been. Um, around since about September when I came into school. He's at the school I teach at now. He's not one of my students, but he's been uh, a really awesome person, kind of cheer me on and uh, been contributing a lot to me in the past couple months. So I really appreciate you, Alex. Um, so Luna says, I haven't taken any actions yet because I haven't been to the school yet. Oh, right, because you're in middle school, I believe you said. But I will find a teacher and go from there. Remember that one. Things are Things are going good for you, for your channel right now. Yeah, keep up the great work, says PMG Fitness. Thank you. Um, so some ideas that I was sharing with Luna, and Luna, keep asking questions as they come to you about this idea. But some of the ideas that I shared with Luna and um, Paul Andrews on, on the other channel was, uh, so for those that don't know what a Gay Straight Alliance is, it's a club that a lot of high schools create out there um, and it's an opportunity for, this is this is my experience of it. It's not necessarily the truth, but I would say a, a gay straight alliance is an opportunity for um, students that identify with the LGBTQA community um, to come together and I would say create some opportunities to meet each other, one, um, and two, because, because they are a minority, right? The, most people are not a part of that community. And so I think that's that's often why most clubs exist, is to bring together, um, not the majority, but to give opportunities for the minority to sort of find each other. Like chess club is an opportunity for a bunch of people that are chess enthusiasts to meet each other and play each other. Because you don't just go asking everybody on the street, hey, you want to play chess? You want to play chess? And you could do that, but that would make it a little challenging. Um, versus like basketball, it's really easy to just – have a ball around, start playing, and then people kind of join in. Some communities, it's not quite that easy. So that's sort of, I think, the opportunity of a GSA is to bring people together. And as well as, you know, it, 
is if you haven't been living under a rock, um, it's not easy being a part of that community as that community's received a lot of undeserved hatred from a lot of groups of people, some religious, some just anti, uh, in, uh, like homophobic. Um, and there's just a lot of BS that has gone on in the, in the years that, that people have been out, you know, the, um, Jeremy, oh, no, that's not his name. Is it Jeremy Laramie? The, I remember the Laramie Project. There was a young man, I believe it was out in Colorado, um, was killed because he was gay. Um, there have been other situations throughout the years of, of gay people, you know, getting, again, undeserved violence, um, negativity, harassment, et cetera. And so I think the, the mission statement, I would say, off the top of my head, this isn't what it is certainly, but I would say the mission statement of the GSA is probably to help bring awareness that, you know, it's not wrong to be gay. And two, that, um, you know, they have a voice and they can be proud of who they are, even if they're not accepted by everyone. And so it's a source where they can be proud of themselves and, and accept them for themselves. Because I think if, when it's hard for you to find acceptance with a community, it's, it's hard enough to get that, but if you can't do that, it's increasingly challenging to find acceptance in yourself. Um, Luna, Luna says, I'm going into ninth and it's the summer right now. Yeah, we're, we're almost at summer. We have a boat. <laughs> we have one, two, five, seven. We have eight more days of school plus finals. So we got technically like 12 days of school left. I'm a new supporter passing by to say hi. Thank you, Exploring with Eric. Um, so, yeah, so the GSA is a, is a great opportunity for people to um, grow that community, grow acceptance for that community, and to find power and, and bring empowerment to people part of that community that might not feel it because it's probably, if you were to find a, a default way of being, I imagine it would not necessarily be immediately empowering to be gay or to be a part of that community. So that's sort of the purpose of the GSA. And so here's some ideas. Now I've offered ideas for recently and I'm gonna share a video with you that I shared in the other chat, which is um, some idea, some idea, a, a video that I created specifically for um, people that are interested in having more sort of symbols of acceptance in their high schools or you know in their middle schools and um, this video what my intention was was to bring people um, some some ideas for them to be able to act on having pride symbols in their in their classrooms and their communities so personally as a teacher that has a pride flag in my classroom uh, I know that I grew up very accepting of gay people, and I think that one of the one of the challenges that I imagine a lot of teachers that are accepting might face is, you know, it, it's not necessarily common to have a pride flag in your classroom. It's not always going to be common to see that, um, like all the other faculty, has stickers like safe space stickers in their classroom. But um, I have a bunch of ideas for how we can go about making it easier, making it safer, um, making it more doable to have that. So that's a video that I actually worked really hard on that video to try to um, really keep people engaged and have as many ideas and in, in sort of a short, you know, it's not the shortest video, it's about 10 minutes, but um, I really tried to power pack that one. And uh, I take, I actually take a lot of pride in that, that video. I'm glad that I made it. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world where people just judge and overall disrespectful people they won't accept that, but everyone should be happy and move forward with their lives. Absolutely, exploring with Eric. Um, so some ideas. So I'm gonna reiterate some of the ideas that are in that video, as well as um, some sort of, oh, there, was, there was another idea that came up today. I think it was in the other chat. Let me know if you guys have other ideas, because I think that's the beauty of live chat, is you can sort of add to what I'm talking about here. Hold on a second. So one of the first ideas that I had presented to Luna when, when they were talking about it was they wanted to start a GSA in their school. 
And I said, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot down your confidence, but I would say you're going to have some options, whether you want to start like coming in hot, like coming in strong, uh, with a lot of confidence and just straight up asking teachers like, Hey, do you want to start a GSA? Do you want to start a GSA? Would you help me start this? Um, you could come in. I, I might describe that almost as aggressive, not a bad way. Just like you want to make something happen. And I, I love that. Um, and one of the challenges of that is you got to have tough skin because there's a very high probability. I would bet not that it's the truth, but I would bet there's some solid probability that could get rejected one because teachers have lives and sometimes starting a club can be a pretty big responsibility. Um, two, they might just not generally be interested in making that happen. Um, and no, no students have come up to me with ideas for a club yet, but I anticipate in the future they might. And I can imagine there are some ideas that I might not be pumped up enough about to actually start the club. Now, that those are two options. And then the third one is, you know, they might just totally disagree with the idea of GSA. That we know that that exists out there as sad as that reality is. So those are some things that could happen if you were to come in hot, come in confident, come in swinging and aggressive and really trying to make a GSA happen. So there's one thing. The other sort of option is coming in a bit softer. Um, some ideas that I, I think my, I'd like to think my most genius idea, let me just straighten that bow tie for a second, is um, I think some of the best ways to really influence people is having very subtle cues. So a really subtle cue I think would be um, if someone were to come into my classroom and say, hey, would you consider putting up this kind of poster in my room? And let's say I didn't have a pride flag and you know they didn't know what my stance was on um, gay people or GSAs or whatever. If they said, hey, can I put up this poster? It's Ellen and she's just talking about being kind to others. I'd be like, yeah, where do you want to put it? And then I'd say, yeah, go ahead and put it up. And you know that would be one thing. Now, I think it's pretty widely known that Ellen is gay, um, that she was one of the first pe people to really come out like on live TV and, and really kind of make a splash in her industry. And uh, <laughs> I think that if you found a teacher that was accepting of an Ellen poster, saying something inspirational or pleasant um, or just nice, that's a great start. So that's sort of the, their first step is find some sort of celebrity that might um, be associated with being gay. Um, another one that's sort of hidden um, and is also a really good one. Oh, what is his name? I can't remember his actual name. He's in that video that I put in the chat there, but he's played by Benedict Cumberbatch in The Imitation Game. And The Imitation Game is a movie about a engineer slash mathematician that's trying to break the code of the Germans in World War II and sort of the the characters sort of like what's the word for it um it, it's really not a fatal flaw but it becomes a fatal flaw because of the way that he's perceived for it is he is gay and he has um, a relationship with another male and um that's really really frowned upon in that environment um, in, back in 1945 and or 40s, and um, I, I forget how his life ends. I for uh, I don't remember how it ends, but um, I remember being sad at the end of the movie. Movie how it ended because we we're all sad that he kind of he gave something up because people found out that he was gay. So he's a really great character in person. Um, he could really he could really be a great fit for any math class because he's a famous mathematician and you could absolutely make a great case for why a poster of him or like a portrait of him like the first mathematician to um really use their mathematics wisely to um help win a war it's said that his communications and his decoding of the german code uh I forget the name of the code but um his contribution to the war was actually really um, underappreciated because they were able to intercept all of these messages 
And because of that, they're able to slowly impact the war. If they had just immediately um, like started like almost like cheating by getting all these messages and just like, oh, Enigma, yes, thank you, Yellow. Um, oh, thank you, Yellow, for that other comment. Um, if, if they were to jump in hot and be like, whoa, we're gonna stop this thing, we're gonna ambush here, we're gonna stop this ambush here, we're not, like, the Germans would have figured out that they had figured out their code. So they probably would have tried doing something different. So because of that, they're really able to influence the war in such a way that the Germans didn't notice. So he was a really great mathematician that made a difference. Um, let's see, Ellen's kind of my go-to favorite. Another good one is Anderson Cooper. So if you're in a history class and you wanted to find somebody um, that's sort of journalistic, is that a word, like a journalist, um, that could be a good person, maybe for an English uh, was suicide. Thank you for telling me, Paul. I, I didn't want to say that and be wrong, but thank you for pointing that out. Um, I think Anderson Cooper is a good person probably for an English classroom, maybe a history classroom. I, I guess, uh, uh, what's his name? The Again, the, the guy from the imitation game, he might also be a good one for a history class. Also, Tim Cook, yes. I'm trying to remember, oh, Tim Cook, he's um, a CEO of Apple. You know, he could be great for a math class. He could, I mean, really any class. I mean, anyone that appreciates CEOs, business class, um, Tim Cook's definitely a good one. Um, some ones that I really love that I don't think that many people know about, and they're actually trans. I think both of them are trans. They were both brothers, and now they're sisters, I believe, um, are the Wachowskis. So quick quiz question. Jump into the chat. Don't look it up on Google. Does anyone know who the Wachowskis are and or what they've directed? While you try to scramble to answer that without Googling it, I'm going to drink some water to rest my voice. Looks like no one's got a guess on that one. So the Wachowskis actually wrote um, and directed The Matrix. Matrix is one of my favorite movies. I, I do not know them. Nope. Yeah, so they are the ones that directed the. Um, the matrix if you've ever if you've not seen the matrix and you enjoy listening to me i highly recommend watching them um it's sort of very philosophical inception was actually christopher nolan um christopher nolan also like one of my favorites but um yeah in the matrix it's if you've ever heard someone say you know if you want to take the red pill or the blue pill red, uh the question was who um, the Wachowskis, what did they direct and or what movies did they make um, and or what other things have they produced? And I'm going to drop you the other one after this. So um, the red pill or the blue pill, uh, red pill is like you sort of get to see behind the curtain and find out um, like what's going on in the Matrix. And it turns out the Matrix is actually um, the – is that – in the Matrix, the people that seem to be living in reality actually find out that they're in a simulation and their real bodies are actually being harvested for energy by the machines because the machines have taken over the world. Um, so that's that's a really interesting concept and it kind of blew my mind. And uh, and I, I just loved all three movies. And it I've been told for any, any of you that have heard of the Landmark Forum, which I, I took a couple years ago, that all three of those movies are creative interpretations of the three courses at Landmark, the um, Landmark Form Advanced Course in Self-Expression Leadership Program. So if you, are, uh, if you are one that is a fan of The Matrix and you are interested in you know, starting a Gay Stray Alliance or bringing acceptance into your school, Learn more about the Wachowskis, the other really great series that they created on Netflix, which I think they have either one or two or like two and a half seasons, is um, Sense8. So Sense8 is a, it's a, it's a, not a mini series, but it's a series that is based on the idea that there are these eight people that are in pods that can all experience each other's kind of lives. They have these, kind of 
interesting scenes where they can kind of pop in and pop out. It's almost like this, like, it's almost like they can uh, face time each other, but like, it's almost like they can hop into each other's bodies. It's this kind of cool idea, but there's a, a transgender person in the video uh, in the show as well. And, and I don't know, it's just, it's all, it's just a really, really wonderful um, series. I invite all of you to check out if, if you're looking for something on Netflix um, and you're already going to go find something anyway, I would say go watch Sensei on Netflix. Um, the watch Huskies also created that. I think they had another one, but I don't remember the other one. Um, so for those that are fairly new coming on up, uh, hello, black one. Hello, Jessica. By the way, Jessica is um, someone that I had on for an interview. Um, what, like one and a half or two weeks ago. Um, she makes similar content to mine. That's inspirational in nature. She makes music. Um, and she, she, she's just constantly coming out with good stuff. And that's why I wanted to have her on. She, she's a creator. She lives pretty close to me. We're going to be doing some collaborating this summer. Um, oh yes. Yellow. Thank you. So, um, yellow commented Leonardo da Vinci is another gay person in history. So for those that just came on, what I'm doing is, um, sharing with you some, some ideas for starting a gay straight alliance. And part of that is we're looking for people that you could put on a poster that you could sort of put up in a classroom that people not, might not realize that those people were gay, um, but would actually start to sort of um, bring people together, start giving some awareness, some acceptance towards um, gay pride. So Leonardo da Vinci, that's another great one. Um, honestly, I haven't done enough research about him. Um, but some people have also told me that that information is false. So I have to do a little more research to, to back that one up fully. But um, I, I do, I've definitely heard that before that Leonardo da Vinci was also gay. Um, and so for those that don't know Leonardo, I'm pretty sure, I mean, if you search him, you'll find a bunch of stuff, but I'm pretty sure some of his most famous things are uh, um, the Vitruvian man. So it's the picture of like a yellow piece of paper where a guy has his arms out like that and like that and he's naked and his like his legs legs are like I don't know how to describe so let's say his legs are like out like that and then they're out like that as well. Um and he had some other famous pictures and, and drawings and stuff. I didn't know. Um hello thanks Sherry in chat. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, hi Zach, love the tie. Hello everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed the night. Um, thank you about the tie. Um, hello again, Jessica. Well, who's next? Carrie Grant. Carrie Grant. Oh, that's um. Carrie Grant is. Uh, uh, I can see his face. Is that Fraser? I think that's who. Fra oh, Mo t t t t thank you, Yellow idiot. Um, Mo <laughs> it's. <laughs> To me, Vitruvian Man sticks out more than the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper. My bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that one out, y'all. I feel like an idiot for that one. Um, but yeah, Leonardo da Vinci also had those two. And I, I bet there's tons and tons of Mona Lisas in schools. Probably not the Last Supper because it's a bit religious, but Mona Lisa definitely. Um, Cary Grant. Yeah, let me just double check. I'm pretty... Cary Grant is Frasier, right? Frasier was a, a character on, oh, not, not at all. Nope. All right, yeah, Car I, I've definitely seen that face. I've definitely seen him in movies before, and I honestly don't know what, I don't know why I thought Frasier. Cary Grant, actor. What are his major movies? To Catch a Thief, A Fair to Remember, North by Northwest. I've heard of that one. Uh, I don't honestly know too much about Cary Grant. I forget Cary Grant's first film. All right, so I'll be honest. Alex, that's a good one to drop in there, and I don't know much about Cary, Cary Grant. Um, Julius Caesar? I didn't know Julius Caesar was gay. Is that right? Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. Uh, assassination. I don't have to dig a little deeper. I did not know Julius Caesar was gay. That's news to me. 
All right. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into Wikipedia despite the fact that I could. Um, an interesting uh, total side note, um, one of my friends in high school um, gave me this idea that any time that they go on to Wikipedia, they just try to become mini experts in things. So if they find themselves on Wikipedia, they'll like just dive in, read the whole page, find some random link that will sort of um, be similar in content and then they'll go read that and then like three hours later they'll just be like a mini expert on like 20 different things so that's an interesting way to to become more just know more stuff um, who's the other one um, a good one but I think this guy's a bit so back to adding more people to our list um, another good one but at the same time, not necessarily um, it, a little more on the obvious side is uh, Tyler Oakley. Uh, the reason I really like the, the idea of having like a Tyler Oakley poster is because I think that our youth today are growing up really being used to having these, um, you know, these celebrity sort of YouTubers that, that they've grown up with, that they've seen grow sort of in front of their eyes. Um, they've started, you know, a YouTube channel from nothing. Not they didn't have their shot on the Disney Channel, um, but they just grew um, through making content, being content creators. So, um, Gus Kenworthy. I don't know who that is. I'm gonna do a screen share so we can all learn together. Gus Kenworthy. Let's see. So, so I'm Julius Caesar. Gus. Kenworthy. I'm glad we're doing this in a chat. I feel like I'm learning a bunch. Oh, American freestyle skier from Colorado competes in. That's a good one. Yeah. And there's also, um, I know that there's another. <laughs> it's interesting how the in Instagram comes up first. I'm curious if Gus has any pictures with like a, a partner or anything on here. Um, one million followers. This guy's big. Is that a partner? That dude's in shape. Damn. What's the post say? Amazing weekend in Vienna. It was a huge honor to be there. We have to speak about important work fighting HIV AIDS. Uh, oh, those are all comments. I don't know who that guy is. Anyone know if that's his partner? Someone commented in their cuties. Um, Alexander says, what's happening? Are we gay stalking? Um, Alexander, I guess you could say we're doing that. So what we're doing is we're talking about um, ideas for how to start a GSA. And um, one of the ideas that I've come up with sort of is that if you wanted to, rather than like sort of coming aggressively into a school and be like, hey, I want to start a GSA is sort of looking for people that might be willing to support you. And a, like sort of a starter is creating some like sort of inspirational posters or just posters of inspirational people that you can invite teachers to have in your classroom. So one of the things that, that I have, um, I'm gonna be honest, I made a mistake. I thought Lin-Manuel Miranda was gay and I totally thought that um, having a poster I would have a gay person in my room turns out he's straight I don't know why I was under the impression that he was gay but I, I had meant to have um, somebody up I I should probably just bite the bullet and do it you know sometimes it takes me a little while to make these these posters but um, I have a poster right I, I have a couple of like homemade posters in my classroom so what I've done is I have taken a regular image um, blown it up, thrown a quote on there, almost memified it, and then, or quotified it, I guess you could say, and then like printed it out on an Excel sheet. And what you can do with that is when you have an Excel sheet, you can put, you can print it out in eighths or sixths or something. When you do that, you can put them all next to each other and then you have a giant poster instead of just a regular eight and a half by 11. So <laughs> are we gay stalking? We're looking for people that we could offer to have posters of in um, classrooms of teachers that we're friendly with. 
So like if someone offered like, hey, I got this poster idea, can I make it for you and would you put it up? Um, I would probably say, show me the image and the quote first. Um, if I okay it, then go ahead and build it. Like if it takes some effort to build it or if you're just gonna buy it, let me know what it is before you do it so that I'm not rejecting you after you bought it. But I think that teachers would be much more likely to put up a poster in their room of a gay person saying something inspirational maybe than having a gay pride flag or something of that nature. Um, I have a gay pride flag and part of the reason that I'm talking about this tonight is because in the past 48 hours, um, for those that came on fairly recently, I've been, so for, for a bunch of you that know, I just hit a thousand subscribers on the Think Share last night. Also today, I hit a thousand subscribers on Zachary Watson, which is the channel that I started with and then I, decided I wanted to really sort of nicheify it because I was all over the place on that channel. I said I wanted to do inspirational daily content for like high school to millennials. And um, the Zachary Watson channel, I just had a bunch of stuff on and in the past 24 hours, my video about why I have a pride flag in my classroom has gone up 16,000 views and that channel has gone up four hundred subscribers in the past week um and i didn't even realize it until last night i was like what like zachary watson's gonna pass the think share and subscribers i'm pissed because i've been working so hard on think share that i'm like i'm like mildly annoyed that all of this work um is still gonna get surpassed by something that goes viral but i decided to live stream on the other channel and try to invite a couple of my new subscribers over there to come over to the think share because um, I actually make stuff daily on here. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. Like we went to grab dinner. We got Papa Gino's tonight and that video was at 30, 31,000. And when we got back and had a slice and, and watched like 15 minutes of just like wanting to chill a little bit, it had gone up 2,000 more views. It's up to, I mean, since it's been live stream, let's just check real quick. Thank you guys for letting me be just a little bit egotistical and checking the video again. Um, wait for it. Oh, it's not in the suggested. Wait for it. So if you search Zachary Watson, actually, when I pull it up, I'll, um, if you search Zachary Watson and I think the word pride in Google, it's the fourth one down. Now that could be just cause it's on like my server and like it recognizes things. Someday I'm going to have to pass the Zachary Watson, which is an LSU baseball player. Someday I'm going to have to pass him in popularity on YouTube slash Google. But let's see right now. This video is up to load uh 35,000 so it's gone up 2,000 more views since I started live streaming on that channel so just to give you an idea it I would say it's gone pretty viral it's going around like 500 to a thousand views per hour right now so uh I, I was really trying to find a way to convert all those people that were giving me some airtime and bring them over to something that I've been working really hard on and if they, um, you know, if they're interested in getting more content, I want to bring them over to where I'm creating daily. Um, back to your questions, Matt Wilkin, bro. My math teacher found out I was gay and started picking on me. Yo, f off. That's BS. Like, when you say started picking on you, say more about that. I'm curious as to what what you mean by that. When you say pick on you, like they just started calling on you when when they knew you wouldn't have the right answer? Like, what does that mean? Yes, his partner. I have some good ones. I just found found you this morning from the Pride Flag video, actually, but congrats on that milestone. Thank you, Alexander. Um, Ty Speaks, I'm, I'm taking your suggestion and making a video about this. Awesome, Ty. Um, oh, by, so by the way, so Ty Speaks, um, he is also a YouTuber, uh, creates pretty similar content to mine. If you're new to my channel and um, you found me maybe through the gay pride video or something. Um, I make daily, I want to say like inspirational sort of, um, mindful type videos where I just share my kind of life experiences. And, um, and I, I told, and Ty speaks is someone that comes on very often. 
um, remember the traffic talk videos? Yeah. So traffic talk was, uh, I made those back when I was still like trying to figure out how to fit in a daily video into my lifestyle. Um, and I used to like, I just used to talk on my ride to the, on the way into work, uh, when I was inspired about something and, uh, <laughs> And uh, so I started editing and calling them traffic talk. So that's that's what Alex is referring to there. Luna Space Game, we can tell that you're excited. <laughs> Thank you, Luna. Um, <coughs> I gotta drink more. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm gonna do a quick commercial break. I gotta refill my water. My, my throat's getting scratchy on me again. I'll be back in a minute. If you can, throw in a couple questions in the comments so I can answer them when I come back. Um, maybe you're new to the channel. Maybe it's about um, starting a GSA or a Pride flag. Um, stay weird, BRB. Yes. I'm curious if you guys can hear the music from whoa, ten people. More people came on. That's crazy. Dot 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 dot. Luna, what's up with the dot dot dots? I don't get it. What was the inspiration to teach? I bet your students love you. Well, Paul. Ooh, that's that's a tough one. So my inspiration to teach. Um, I I would say I pretty much started teaching because my mom. Um, my mom was a teacher for 36 years as a. Oh, you can't hear it, Alex. Um, <laughs> Uh, my mom was a teacher for 36 years in Massachusetts, and uh, she 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 had a couple clubs. I forget what they're called, but um, you know she would come home with all these sort of inspiring stories about what she was able to do. Night, Chantel. Thank you for joining us. Um, she she'd come home with all these great stories of how she had inspired or, or impacted people's lives. And I think growing up with that i always kind of said like i want to do that for people i want to be that person i want to be that leader in my community so i went to school for engineering i uh, had an engineering job and it was just not very social it didn't really bring me where i wanted to and so i i decided you know what this this really just isn't for me and uh i decided you know what i'm not I don't want to be an engineer anymore if, if cubicle life is how it's going to be. So I came over to be a teacher because, you know, just teaching inspires me a hell of a lot more than being a software developer did. Um, so that's what inspires me to be a teacher. Now, I would say, <laughs> you bet. I want to show you guys something I want to do in a minute. Just I'm, I'm curious to see how this works, and it'll be interesting to have you guys witness it with me. But your other question, um, well, your sort of comment, I bet your students love you. It's hard to tell. You know, I, I think an interesting thing about a teacher, and I've been told by a lot of my colleagues, is that as a teacher, you don't necessarily get feedback on whether you're doing things right, but you will definitely get feedback on when you're doing things wrong. Um, similar to you know, one of my colleagues said to my, me one day is like, you know, whenever you go and talk to a principal, try to focus on the positive because you think about it, most of what the principal deals with is all the negative. So similar to the, um, similar to teachers, um, you know, we don't necessarily get all the positive feedback. So honestly, it's hard to tell whether my students love me or not. Alex, what are you, what are you putting in here? What is this? What is this? I just clicked the link. I'm curious what, what he just put in here. 41 minutes. 
is of letters. Oh, it's Thai. Um, Alex, why'd you put that in there? I'm just, I'm not I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm curious why. Um, um, more money in engineering. There definitely was more money in engineering uh, when I so I graduated college in 2012. Uh, I was a software developer from 2012 to 14, and uh, you know I I did a TEDx talk uh, last year in April. And I talked about, you know, everyone told me that there was more money in engineering. And I realized at some point after doing Landmark Forum that, you know, what's the point of making more money if you're miserable 40 hours a week? Like, what's the extra money do for you? It's so that the, the other 12 hours a week you can enjoy more. Um, oh, you use a title name? I'll have to double check that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really what's the point of having more money if you're miserable 40 hours a week? And I realized I would rather be doing something to improve the world 40 hours a week instead of help a company make more money. When you helped them with that, I found it pretty cool. Um, so what Alex is referring to in there, my friend Ty, Letters from Prison, Episode 9. Um, so Ty that was just in here. Um, wait, I don't know if he's still in here, but he used the title that I'd recommended he did. So one of the interesting things about Ty that he shares with people is that he receives letters from his father who's currently incarcerated. And um, he has been sharing live some of the letters that he receives from his father. And so I invited him one day and I said to him, you know, I know it's kind of clickbaity and I, I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to sell out on the idea that like, I don't want you to, you know, try to make a buck off off the situation you're in. Um, but you might want to consider like having the name of your videos where you talk about these letters from your father, have it be like letters from my father in prison or letters from prison. And so he he wasn't sure if he wanted to change them yet because they were, um, I think they were just labeled letters from dad or something. And so he he did change it and Alex is just pointing that out in the video. Hey, so I want to I show you guys something interesting that I'm just curious. So I'm still a little bit freaked out, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm gonna screen share for a second. Where is it? Um, screen share. This is one of the things I really love about Google Hangouts is you can screen share. So I'm still honestly a bit freaked out about the fact that this video is doing so well. So it's at, stop that, stop it. It's at 34,000, when I refresh, I almost guarantee it's gonna be 35,000. If, um, wait, I forget it. I think that might be on the wrong video. Wait a second. I want to come over here. This one right here, it was at 33 about an hour ago or something or two hours ago. And it is now at, wait for it. This is the video that a bunch of people have recently found. Yeah, it's at 35,000 now. So one of the things I wanted to do, um, and I wanted to show you like a sort of a YouTuber idea. So one of the things I'm trying to, I wanna come back to the camera for a second. One of the, um, I think mistakes that I made in my short YouTube career so far was back in February, I had a viral video that jumped from about 1,000 to about 30,000 views in, in about a week. And it was my reaction as a Patriots fan to um, us losing to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And I realized that there was at one point I was getting about 500 to 1,000 views per hour. And I said to myself, wow, I wish I had been live streaming that whole time so that as people were watching the video, there's a chance that like the live stream would pop up and be like, oh, let's meet this guy. Like instead of just watching his one time video and subscribing or not, like, like right now, that video is now at 81,000 views. And I think maybe 40 subscribers came from that. Now, I know that people probably didn't respect me a ton after that. I mean, the interesting thing about the video is that I really tried to be humble, be, a, be not a sore winner, but like be a humble, appreciative winner that we got to the Super Bowl. 
um, you know, New England fans are pretty much spoiled when it comes to the Patriots. So I want it to be a good showcase of what a New England fan can be instead of rubbing it in the face of the other, other people or diminishing other teams' um, accomplishments. So one of my regrets of that video was that I didn't take advantage of the time when I had a lot, a lot, a lot of traffic um, is I don't know that I took advantage of it. So I wanted to try something and I want you guys to be live here to see if it works. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to screen share and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chat right here. So this chat is this one. So you can actually, this is like 13 seconds behind or so. So I'm going to take this, control C, and so I'm in Google Chrome right now, you can notice. I'm going to go over to Safari onto my other channel. And my other channel currently, this is the video that is getting a ton of attention right now. Um, you can actually see, oh no, wait, that's Chrome as well. No, I want to open Safari. Where's Safari? Where are you, Safari? All right, I want to get in. So notice up here, the icon's a little bit different. This is my other channel. So this other channel is literally blown up. Holy crap, another 30 subscribers in the past like hour or so. So this, is a, this was at 700 like a couple days ago. And I just hit 1,000 and it already upstaged me just from this one video. So what I wanted to do was go into here find that video and what i wanted to do was add a card of me going live so as right now it's getting like literally 500 views an hour or something crazy like that what i want to do and like this was literally at like 1300 a couple hours ago what i'm going to do in here is edit video and I'm going to put a card up in the top there. So if I go to cards, I'm going to put the link to this live chat in there. I'm going to see if I'm, I'm so curious if anyone might click it. I'm going to space this out. It said that you don't want to have your cards too close together. But I'm going to add in another one right at the beginning. Actually, I don't know. I want to keep this one in here, but I'm going to just scoot it back a bit. They say it's good to space them out. So I'm gonna add a card, video or playlist, enter, this is the one I just copy and pasted, put it right there, and I'm gonna put it right here, and I'm going to, let's teach your ideas, edit card, I'm gonna say live. So customize teaser text, custom message, or teaser text is what they see first. Live chat. And I wish I had that like a red emoji button. I don't know how to add it here. Live chat. Um, start. Start a GSA. And custom message. Um, I, I hope this helps. Something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm, it's right here. It's at 24 seconds in. And... That's saved. And another thing I want to show you guys, so I hope I haven't lost people. I hope this is still entertaining to you. Um, I want to show you another thing that you can do when you're taking a look at your analytics. If you go over to analytics, I want to see, so this is a five and a half minute video. I want to see when all my viewers start or drop off. So what I can actually do is I can go in here. I can look directly I just want you to get a picture. This is literally what this channel is doing right now. Watch time views, where's the um, subscribers? This is literally, like it's just skyrocketed in the past couple of days. But that's not what I wanna show. I wanna show you audience retention. So this is like the nitty gritties of YouTube that can be really interesting once you start digging in a bit. And why I have a proud file in my classroom. Watch time, almost 1900 minutes. So right here is showing exactly, that's okay. stop it. So what it's showing right here is as people start, well, it should be 100%, but 100% 100 of people are watching. And then after three seconds, 96% are watching. And it's a slow decline. So after 36 seconds, only about 70% of people are watching. So I think I'd put it at 24. 
So that means about 75% of the people that click the video will probably see that card. And I'm really curious to see how many people actually click the card. So the other interesting thing is, where is it, cards. I can actually look to see um, what kind of things people are doing. Card clicks 56, so, wow. So a really cool, so I, I put this question there, recognize the music in the background, and I can see 56% of the people, so if you listen to the video, it's Macklemore, same love. 56% of it, the people that clicked it said that they recognized the song, and it says that 216 people actually clicked the card. So what I'm, and the other question I said, was um, how often do you hear that after the beginning part that said, that's so gay? 56% of people that clicked that um, said every day they hear that. And I, I tried to be kind of funny here where it says Trump should stop tweeting that 27% people clicked that. Um, and uh, let's see, it's not gonna show up here yet because I just put in, same with this one as I put in fairly recently. Uh, maybe not that recently. Card teaser clicks, 406 clicks. Wow, that's actually done better than the other ones. That's good to know. So I'm curious if anyone's gonna actually come on this live chat from there, um, and if all of a sudden we actually start seeing the amount of people watching increase. So thanks for staying with me on that. I hope hope that was enjoyable. Um, I wanna come back to the comments here for a second. Sam's a pretty cool YouTuber. I don't watch him though. Sam, I don't know who Sam is that you're referring to, Alexander. Alexander. I love that Super Bowl reaction video and the thumbnail is hilarious. My boyfriend was like, I really like that thumbnail. My whole family is a fan. How love how you always be being yourself. Thank you. Um, okay, Cobra says, cute. Hi, Luna Space Queen. Hoy. Hey, sub Dan. Bye. Bye, Dan. See ya. I want to pop in and say hi. Thank you, Nadia. Sorry if I missed you. Um, Luna the Space Queen. Hoi. Uh, Nadia says, hi. Hey, Luna. I was just say hello. Luna the Space Queen be like, hey. Nadia says, hey, Luna, how are you? Luna says, I'm good. Read my question above. The question above. My bad, Alex. Which teacher was was ill today? Was I ill today? I don't. I don't know. I see Sam Collins. I don't know who Sam Collins is, Luna. Who that? Who Sam Collins? Read my questions above. That was interesting behind the scenes YouTube. I thank you, Paul. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, another really interesting thing that I discovered, um, which is kind of strange but at the same time it also makes sense is uh, on YouTube and I feel like in all these uh, chats that go probably over 45 minutes an hour I always end up talking about YouTube analytics because um, it's something I feel like I've learned a ton about in the past year um, oh it's trans YouTuber okay I'll have to check out Sam Collins in a minute actually I'm gonna stop talking about analytics because that's not what we're here for all right let's check out Sam is a transgender gym YouTuber all right we're we're definitely screen sharing that one and then hitting that up. Yas, Sam Collins. Sam Collins. Oops, spelled that wrong. Holy poop. You guys see that? That was at 5.5. That was not 5. I'm um, subscribing. Anti LGBT ads on trans videos. Don't be gay because. <laughs> Transgender question, Sam Collins, pretending to rob a bank for a vlog. Yeah, I like it. Surprising my long distance girlfriend. Coming out as a gay couple prank twist with Sam Collins. Yeah, I'll have to, all right, well I'm subscribed. You know, I don't put a bell on for too many things, but I'm gonna bell this one up. What were, um, I'm gonna click out some of these. I'll keep that one open. All right. I hate when it does that. Okay. Um, Sim Collins, not Jim F. T. For the moment, I hate autocorrect so much. Oh, you must be on your phone. Um, mobile. 
you should do a childish Campino. This is America reaction video. Alex, yo, I'm so, I'm not so anything. I am disappointed because I watched that video and the moment that I, hey, Courtney, um, the the time that I watched that video, I was like, oh, that like I think it had been. So me and my wife, we have a um, we have an Apple TV, so we actually don't really watch regular TV. We actually don't have regular TV, but we have an Apple TV. And one of the interesting things about Apple TV is that you can you can go on there, and it's just a bunch of apps. It's like if you had an iPad. And uh, most of the time we go straight to YouTube first because most of the time we've had a long day and we just want to start laughing. So we find like vines and stuff. And uh, it usually shows like trending ones at the top. And This Is America kept coming up. I was like, oh, I kind of like Childish Gambino. I don't like the fact he uses the N word all the time, but like I can kind of get over that because I don't know. But I remember watching that and then being like all like jaw dropping. I was like, Damn, I wish I had a reaction to this. Like, I wish I had recorded the first time because now if I watch the second time, it just won't be as amazing. But um, yeah, I could definitely do that. One of the ones I really want to do, which I just have not been making the time for, is I want to do a reaction to um, Jake Paul's video, My Teacher, because I think he makes, thank you, Dev. Um, I think he makes a lot of BS points about teachers, and I think he really over overly marginalizes and um what's the word he kind of groups all teachers into one bunch he says um you know my teacher didn't care about my california dreams i make all my students do goal sheets what are you talking about we don't care about your dreams and goals that's crap lies jake paul so and also some of my some of my students have said like someone has actually said jake paul should die in a fire and I don't necessarily believe anyone should die in a fire, but I, I kind of, I, I would say that he doesn't seem like the highest character person, and I kind of feel like he's he's skimming off the top of or skimming off the back of Logan's coattails a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's one of the ones I want to do. Uh, I would love to collaborate with some other teachers. Um, sadly, it might have to wait a little bit, but that's definitely one of the ones that I also want to make is a reaction to that because I think. Um, as a teacher uh, that has viral ability. I'm gonna make 13 viewers. I've literally never had 13 people on the ch on a chat before. That's that's a record uh, for everyone that's on right now. 13 is literally a record. I've never had 13 on at the same time before. Um, so Mr. Watson just had birthday lobster and it was great. How do you feel about seafood? Freaking loves it. 14. Holy poop. Um, I love seafood. Uh, I'm a big fan of fish, and I feel like they are not as uh, beat up as like cows or chickens. Although, then again, I don't know much about fish. Holy poop. 16 viewers. Uh, seventh. I, I, I don't know how to react right now. So, for those that just came on, I just want to let you know. The Think Share is uh, just recently hit a thousand subscribers. Before tonight, my record was eleven viewers on at once, and right now it's telling me seventeen, and now sixteen. Seventeen is a record uh, for this channel. So thank you for being here live for the first time, breaking past eleven. I think the last time I had eleven was like a couple months ago. It's been a while. Uh, about seafood, DevCon, it's your turn. This socio-political channel. Let's. Let's turn this into socio-political channel. Dev, I'm not sure I want to do that. See, tonight's a little bit different than no normal. I, I wouldn't say I'm always talking about gay rights, although I, I do really like talking about it. Um, at the same time, I try to stay somewhat neutral when it comes to politics because as a teacher, like, you, you got to be, you know, you got to be accepting of a lot of different viewpoints. So. I'm, I'm not actually interested in turning this into a socio-political channel. Thank you for the idea, though. I don't think a lot of people have actual TVs these days. Um, I mean, we do have a TV. We just don't have um, cable. We don't have, like, a normal Comcast. We just have Internet. Um, but, yeah, I think that's part of the reason that I really love live streaming, and I think um, one of the things I need to break past is, um, like, every day planning to have 
a live stream at the same time because I think if I can do that, I might as well just be a TV show, like a talk show. So for those just coming on, I've been streaming for like, what, two hours or something. I know it doesn't say that on here. I was previously on the Zachary Watson channel. I'm wondering if a couple people came over from that. I'm really curious. If you came over because you clicked a card on the um, why I have a pride flag in my classroom video, please let me know. Uh, all of the people in this chat just watched as I created that card for that video because currently that video has been getting like 500 views per hour because it's in the suggested section of YouTube. So I'm really curious if that is where people are coming from. Um, thank you, DevCon. Oh, I saw that one earlier. Um, I dislike Jake Paul, Logan Paul, but I don't want them to die. You know, I totally agree with you, Luna. I, I didn't really agree with the person that said that they wanted to see them die that way. I, I agree. I don't like them, and I don't think they deserve to have a nasty death by any means. Not a teacher, but just stopping in to show support. Thank you, Insta Reply. Um, Ice Cubes, 15. Nice. What grades do you teach, Alexander says? I teach 9th and 10th grade, Algebra 2, and Geometry. And uh, on I, I did the math the other day. On average, I live stream for about half an hour a night. Um, you know, tonight's definitely on the higher end of the spectrum, but I'm usually, I'm sure Alex could give a good idea of what I, uh, what I talk about on this channel, but the, the purpose of this channel was, was originally to, um, sell my book. It was originally a marketing plan and eventually I grew to love making YouTube videos. And in the past like couple months, I've grown to really love live streaming and trying to teach people, my students, my peers, about um, about being mindful, about having being okay with your human experience, being okay with the emotions that come to you, and being um, really self-aware. So, um, also short, sort of sharing some of the things about my bucket list, uh, sharing things that I'm accomplishing that I'm dealing with, um, and really trying to be a model for authenticity on social media, where authenticity is kind of missing. Um, so that that's the other thing that I teach uh, in my in my non classroom time, I guess you could say. Luna is a vegetarian. In a vegetarian, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, what grades you teach? Just answer that. How is your day today? Just wondering. Eh, whatever. Uh, I'd say I had a better than good day. It has improved as uh, I've hit some sort. I've hit some record numbers on a live stream. I've also uh, come close to breaking some, well, actually, in the past 24 hours, both of my channels, Zachary Watson and ThinkShare, have hit 1,000 subscribers, so it's actually been a pretty above average day. Um, Luna Space Queen, he teaches 9 to 10. What, what a good question to ask you. Luna's, whoa, just skipped a bunch. Oh man, I'm getting real behind. Um, Luna's the OG stand. Oh, nice. I'm in grade nine. I'm impressed you deal with them daily. Thank you, Alexander. Nope. I came over from that video. Hey. Um, so for those that saw me put in that card, Joey came from that little card. Hi, Zach. I went live earlier on my channel. So for those of you that don't know Skylar and Friends um, that's in the chat right now, I did an interview with him the other day. And one of the things that we sort of uh, talked about on there was that he was going to be doing some live streaming. So he's been a man of his word. Let's applaud him for that. I invite you, if you're interested, hold on. If you're in, if you're interested in finding someone that is unapologetically joyful about life, is a dog lover, and is somewhat funny and comedic, and puts some effort into videos, and has created a children's book about dogs, Scholar and Friends is the channel that you would want to go to. He's fairly small. I think he's got under 100 subscribers last I checked. Um, and I think he has a lot of talent that is undiscovered. I invite you to check him out before he goes big, just so you can say you were there. Um, that's my invitation to all of you. Yeah, I came from that bed F, whatever. Love it. Oh, my God. Yas in the OG. Um, Husky in a hoodie. I'm from that video, but I subscribe because I think you're an amazing person for supporting LGBTQ people so openly. Thank you, Husky in a hoodie. Um, 
my uh, mother invitation is to uh, subscribe to this channel rather than the other one because I do not, uh, I don't know if that's what you meant by subscribe to this channel, <coughs> but uh, that other channel I, I don't regularly post on anymore. Um, that video has just uh, had a lot of attention in the past 48 hours or so. Um, Scout and friends will last show of the day. So many new subs. Hell yeah. What subject or subjects do you teach? Algebra 2, um, geometry, honors, geometry, college prep. And as I said before, this I, I consider this uh, YouTube channel is very much another thing that I teach. Mindfulness, life experience, human emotions, being okay with ourselves, accepting ourselves, being self-aware, um, and practicing and taking action on your bucket list. Those are some of my top things. And learning just generally how to be a kinder, better citizen. I'm sorry, my throat keeps getting scratchy because I've been streaming for this long. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. The cold probably getting attention due to Pride Month. I, I think I think I'm definitely gonna agree with you on that, Alexander. Um, I didn't see it coming, but I've uh, an interesting thing as a YouTuber is you realize that you're almost a little bit of a business, like you're you're bringing value to something. But an interesting thing that I've discovered about this is I got to treat it like a business sometimes. And although sometimes it feels a little uncomfortable, like last night I created a playlist for um, it being an ally for the LGBTQA community, and and so I put that. Um, as the top playlist, so when you come to the ThinkShare channel, that's the first playlist you see, and I also change it so the first video you see when you click the ThinkShare is um, the one about me giving advice for um, what people can do to help teachers bring pride flags to their um, to their classrooms. Big MCAS day tomorrow. Ready to attack the day and be motivated to do my best. Yeah! So Alex is a student at my school. Um, he's not actually in any of my classes, but MCAS is one of our state standardized tests that students have to pass to graduate high school. So Alex, hey, I love the love and feel free to get some sleep. You don't have to stay on here, but I know I know you enjoy it here. You're a big contributor. Um, but yeah, they have to take the biology one tomorrow. I think back when I was in high school in 2008, that was like one of the first years they were testing out. So when we took the bio test, like, was like experimental and I remember some of my friends like I remember literally one of my friends just took it not seriously at all and he made some people angry he drew like Pokemon and stuff and just kind of illustrated some things that he didn't need to in the sections low-key subs to everyone in the chat yes yeah, saw that what have have you ever had a student come out to you if so can you describe what that was like? Absolutely. So um, I wouldn't say that, that students have come out to me first. I think that there have been students that have, that have come out to me, but like I wasn't the first person. I was one of the first few people. And um, one of the really powerful things about that, I think, is you have like a new – profound um, respect for that person and you have a new sense of responsibility um, <laughs> thank you ice cubes you have a new sense of responsibility around being that person so um, there have been a couple of students that come to mind and uh, I know that just by having the pride flag and just by really chewing out a couple of students that use the word fag in class um, I know that I really gained the respect and um, that gave them the comfort to be able to talk to me about their, about who they are. And um, I mean, I've, I've brainstormed with a couple of students before about um, coming out to their parents and coming out to a, a larger community that might not accept them as much as I have. So, you know, it's, it's really an honor, I think, for someone to come out to you. <coughs> you wrong put <coughs> um it's really an honor when when someone comes out to you because i think you find um you find like a lot of humanity in those moments you realize how human they are 
and uh, you know, when when you're working with teenagers that are constantly sort of judging you and and saying silly things and saying rude things, sometimes I think you you almost forget <laughs> you almost forget sometimes that there's a human behind it, and they're just wearing a mask to try to show that they don't care and that they're aloof to everything. So I think moments like that were really special um, because you realize that you've penetrated past the teenage mask and you've, uh, you know, they've felt comfortable and authentic enough that um, they're willing to show you who they are. So really, really privileged moments. The child, Skylar Friend says, the child that is in my children's book is gender neutral. Name is Skylar. I wrote the book with no he or she. It was hard, but I wanted to make it very inclusive. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. I <laughs> I think I've asked you at some point who Skylar was, but I I totally forgot the other day. I meant to ask you on the interview. Good to know that. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting thing. When I make slides, I make, like, word problems and stuff for people, uh, for my students in class. I really try to use gender neutral names. Um, like some of my go-tos are Alex, uh, Jaden, um, uh, I'm trying to remember some of it. I, but usually I'll like, oh, Taylor. Uh, but I'll usually search up a bunch of gender neutral names and use those in my problems and then try to not use pronouns. I, I do that similarly. Thank you, Louie. Yeah, I'm okay. I just had water go down the wrong pipe. Um, your friend should talk to Poke Go Bros. Alex, say more about what, what you mean by my friend should talk to Poke Go Bros. How can I come out to my teacher? I want to come out as trans them, but I have no idea how to do it. Um, so, eh, whatever. Um, what I would say is, first off, why do you want to do it? I think the reason anyone would, holy crap, 19 people watching. Thank you for helping me break records tonight. That's uh, never had 19 on before. Um, and whatever, I would say, sorry, just totally, I have ADHD and uh, sometimes I get off track quite a bit. Hey, Gemma Grace. Uh, <coughs> um, coming out to a teacher, I would say, yeah, the first question I want to ask is why. I think any reason that someone would want to come out to their, um, teacher would be that they want to establish a a sort of closer connection and deeper relationship with that person. I think the value in that is the value in having a deeper connection with a teacher is that you have one more person that you can trust. So at whatever, by the way, at whatever, what is your real name? So because it feels just a little bit weird referring to as eh, whatever. So what I would say is um Is that the first person you're coming out to? If they are, have you done any kind of, I'm going to call it dip sticking. So dip sticking in a car is when you're checking the oil and you have the stick that you dip all the way in and you can just see on the very tip of it how much oil is on the end to see if you need an oil change. And um, so dip sticking in this case would be like, have you had conversations with them about gay people? Um, oh, Ollie. Thank you. So, Ali, um, what kind of conversations have you had with the teacher before? Um, do you already know that they are friendly towards gay people? Like, have they ever spoken highly of Ellen DeGeneres or something? Do you know if they have a pride? I'm sure you would know if they do, but do they have a pride flag in the class? Do they have, um, you know, what are some of the things that you know about the teacher that would sort of allude to whether they would sort of accept it or not. Now I would really, I, I don't know what state you live in that could make a difference. You know, if you're in the Bible belt, that's definitely gonna be a tougher conversation. Um, oh, they're actually gay. Ollie, I would say, <laughs> I would say go up to them, you know, find a moment that, that just feels right. It, then again, there's going to be no real moment that might feel right. But I would say, you know, approach them when you're alone and say, hey, you know, I, um, if you can look at your purpose for why you want to share it with them, it sounds like you want to create an ally. Um, you know, if there's a teacher that's gay and you want to share with them that, that you're transitioning or you're trans, um, you know, 
you can go up and there's honestly there's a good chance they already have an idea of it um if you were to say you know i just wanted to let you know because i feel really comfortable with you and i just wanted to let another person know is that i'm trans and you know share a little bit of your story i think um any anyone that is willing to share that information and someone that that is gay i, I think they get the idea of coming out to some to someone else i think they would really appreciate that you would share share something that deep and personal with them so one of my challenges for people is like if if you're constantly in your comfort zone you're not growing so i would also challenge yourself to say if you were to get past this conversation if if it occurred to you as something challenging to do is ask yourself who would you have to be being to really share yourself authentically with this teacher um and if you were to do it like how much would you have grown just by sharing that with them you know i the the first time this this might not sound at all correlated but i i promise it is first time i ever live streamed i said to myself like i know i'm interesting enough people watch my videos but am i interesting enough that people actually listen to me talk live like i'm i feel like i'm kind of boring and so i debated and thought and can and like just twiddled my thumbs about it. I thought a long time about doing my first live stream last summer. And, uh, you know, finally I said, what's the worst that happens? I click the button and no one watches and I just create a video, but I have a bunch of ums and likes and my speech sucks. And, uh, and, uh, is like that. And I realized that who I became by clicking the button, by deciding to go live, I ended up, one person came on and ended up talking to me for a bit. Um, you know, I, I transformed a little bit as a, as a person for taking that action. So ask yourself, who are you willing or want to become uh, by taking that action? And what is the purpose behind sharing that with the teacher? And I think if you can get to the core of that and then share that specifically with your teacher, and so you just want to have another ally in class that, you know, knows a little bit about you. And I think, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not gay myself, but I would imagine that, you know, trans people, gay people, lesbians, like I'm sure there's somewhat of a, um, a, a background that everyone probably appreciates about each other on some level, just because they know on some level that they've gone through something similar. So I, all you let me know what, what you think about that, but I, I hope that's of use to you. Oh boy, I missed a bunch. What university did you go to? I went to UMass Amherst, UMass Lowell and uh, for my master's, Amherst was engineering. Um, uh, for, yeah, my bachelor's. Um, did you know that they have a private messaging thing on YouTube? Yes, I actually do use it. Um, feel free to send me a request if you'd like to. Taylor's a great name, I think. Thanks, Jared. Jim and Grace, yes. He was trying Pokemon, right? Oh, I see what you're saying, Alex. I, I get you now. Loving the bow tie. Thank you, Gemma. Um, my teacher used the students' names a lot. I don't really know why. It's a little awkward. I, I like using my student names for uh, for problems as well. I think it's like when someone brings up something class, like as we all know, Fortnite is just like the freaking rage these days. Like if I can work in Fortnite and I can work in the name of one of my students that's playing Fortnite, I think it's valuable. And I think the reason teachers do it is because it's somewhat engaging. If you see your name in a problem, I feel like you're a little bit more likely to do the problem if you're someone that kind of tunes up sometimes. We're going to make you get 100 views. Thank you, Luna. Um, you don't have to do that, um, but I would really, I would appreciate that. For some reason, now I have 15 subscribers, so thanks. Nice. <laughs> Alex, you, you probably should just start making your own videos, man. Um, <laughs> Ollie, Ollie's a nice name. Thank you. Alex, you're welcome. Yeah, they're actually gay. Yep. Topic is so important. People, with this, this topic is so important for people with disabilities. So a little bit about Gemma Grace for those that are on and, and saw Gemma Grace in there. Um, Gemma is uh, also a YouTuber. She's from the UK. Um, she has autism. And one of the things she really talks about and tries to um, train people and teach people about in her channel is um, how to have acceptance, how to have some awareness and how to 
share with people and talk to people about autism awareness. Um, I think she's a great example of someone stepping outside her comfort zone. She does live streams. She would, she has received some hate and a lot of um, negative comments. And I think it's been really cool watching her power through those things. Um, and I think the cool part about becoming a YouTuber, I think for, for anyone that, that breaks past, um, you know, sort of the norm and, you know, if you've broken past a hundred or a thousand subscribers, I think you gotta have tough skin and, uh, I think she's she's getting there. She constantly talks about her confidence, you know, not being the highest. And I love that she's authentic enough to share that with a live audience. And I think she's a great inspiration for other people that are autistic that want to start YouTube channels or want to share their story. Uh, and I invite any of you to check her out. She often does live chats. Um, she also has done some videos talking specifically about autism. And uh, I, I think, I, the original, the original video I found you were talking about um, gender fluidity, I believe it was. Um, so yeah, check her out. Those areas, oh, <laughs> so I said the Bible Belt. Alexander said, what is the Bible Belt? South, is the area South Wisdom? Okay, good, people answered that. Okay, well, it would be like North Carolina and stuff. From UK, so I don't know, but think like Mormons. Um, now, I would say Mormons are a bit Different. Oh shoot! I just lost it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yes, no, sorry, I got out of the Bible Belt. I'm from Louisiana, so I'm in the Bible Belt. Okay, Maya, the Space Queen. Wait a second. Did you just change your name, Luna? Luna, did you just change your name to Maya? What? <laughs> what just happened? Um. Um. From Canada, so I educate the states. Okay, neat. Louisiana Bible Belt. More so. Okay, cool, Gemma. It's neat here. I, if you do come here, you should try beaver trails. It's not actually beaver trails, but don't worry. What are beaver? Oh, beaver tails. I'm assuming that's like a like a like a candy or, or some something. I'm an incoming sophomore in college, and I wish I had an algebra two geometry teacher like you when I was in high school. We need more teachers like you in the world. Thank you, Joey. Um, I I'm assuming it's because I have a pride flag and or that I spend time on YouTube talking with people about how to become better people. And um, I hope if you find a teacher or uh, some teachers that you had at some point, feel free to share me with them, especially if there's someone that's talked about having a YouTube channel and they've held themselves back. My goal is to really challenge people to step outside their comfort zones and go after whatever it is that they want to do. Louisiana's Deep Bible Belt, that's actually helped me a lot. A lot of trans people start off identify no i lost it again identify as gay it's all right for me but want to move to seattle toronto interesting had to try to see it if you like so many people don't try to start just start doing it they get on desks and do fortnite dance a lot mostly in art <laughs> that's kind of funny um this talk is so important to me how all he says yeah it's easier coming out that way do it in stages dev conley i don't know who dev conley is if that made sense. Um, I got you whatever hot. Uh, interview time soon. Oh, Gemma, who, yes. Um, thanks, Gallery and friends. Hi, hi Den, Den Calixtro. All he says, yes, it is. That is what I did, whatever, yeah, I did. Yes, I did, because that's my actual name. Neat name, thanks, well said. Yes, I'm back to the bottom. Think sure. This is something I need to talk to you about as part of our interior guarding autism. Beaver tails is a dessert. It's a dough with stuff on it. My favorite is peanut butter with M and M on it. All right, <laughs> I pinky promise that I will have a beaver tail when I come up to Canada. I I would like to visit Toronto of all the places um, uh, of Canada. I, I think I know some people from Toronto. Um, Gemma, feel free to send me a private message, or you can throw it in the chat. What? You forgot that quick, Dev Conley. Oh, whatever I did. Okay. Whoa, that was a lot of questions in the chat. That was some good stuff. Holy poop, it's 9.45. Yo, how long have we been on here, man? We've been going only an hour ago. Holy crap, man. Um, so before there's a flurry of questions, 
um, one of the things that we we're discussing was what are some things that we can put into or invite our teachers to put into their classrooms um, that would sort of allow them to ease into having a GSA program. So we came up with a pretty good list. Um, an hour and 20. Oh, interesting. Okay. Maybe the thing I'm looking at is off. Either way. Um, so a couple that we came up with were some really good ones. Leonardo da Vinci, um, Anderson Cooper, Wachowskis, Ellen DeGeneres. Um, I forget his name. Uh, Gus Kenworthy. We came up with, there was, I think there was another Olympian. Um, So uh, I'll read that in a second. Um, but yeah, we're coming up with a list of pretty much gay people that would be great on a poster. They could have a su success quote of some sort that you could share with a teacher. And if they were to put that up, um, then you could have probably a more open door for them to start something. Sam Smith. Yes, that's a great one. <coughs> um. I'm going to show this one. Um, I'm going to stop what I'm talking about now because we've, we've talked about that quite a bit, but I'm going to jump back in here. Joe says, as somebody with autism, a lot of us get scared to come out to people. I identify personally as somebody in the LGBT plus community. I did not know that, Gemma. That's, that's, I think that's new to me. I didn't realize that. Scholar and friend says, I had someone say the other day on one of my videos, kill yourself, faggot. That was hurtful in my first horrible comment that I got. People can be very cruel. Oh, Troy Sivan, that's another person. Uh, I'm assuming for the pride, pride posters, we'll call them. My teachers have a few flags in their rooms, although I've always watched ones rip them off doors and walls to get new classrooms. Jim Parsons, right? So I want to comment on Scallion and Friends there. Right? So he said, kill yourself. So someone commented on one of his videos, kill yourself, Aggie. So um, quick story I'll share with you all about um, actually <laughs> from the video that a bunch of you came from I think this person took down a bunch of their comments but at some point back when there was maybe two or three or four thousand views on that that video um, there are two or three maybe four people that just kept putting really hateful comments and at some point someone said that they will stop complaining about the pride flag that I had in my classroom when I put up a straight straight pride flag in my classroom. And I was like, what does that even look like? I think it's just like black and white or something. And uh, I said, you know, if, if you really want me to do that, I, I would consider it. I, I would want to have a conversation with you first. And, um, <laughs> and before – and so I said, like, you can send it to me in the mail or something. Cause I, I didn't know who this person was or where they were from. And they said uh, their, <laughs> their original comment to me was if I saw you in person, I would, I don't remember that. I think they just said I would kill you if I saw you in person or I would kick the crap out of you or something like that. And, um, you know, so that was obviously alarming, but then at one point they commented and said, I meant to give it to you today, but it was in my car, which to me says, holy crap, this person's probably either in my one of my classes or they're in my school or something. And uh, they said, I'll give it to you on Monday. And this was Thanksgiving break. And I remember being like having a pit in my stomach the next couple hours because I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this person has at some point said that they would kill me if they saw me. And they've just said that they have the the flag in their car that they're going to give me. So this is what I would say, Scott here in front is, yeah, people can be really mean and I'm not really sure why people are so mean. I think they like the shock value of it, but I think the real value of it is the more we see those things, the easier it all gets, especially when you just see the ridiculous ones like, Man, if you go on to um, if you go on to why I have a pride flag in my classroom, and you find one of the comments that has like fifty replies to it, you'll see me in like you'll see 
a set of conversations in the comments that go 20, like 50 or more comments long. And most of those people are very mean spirited, angry people. Um, and I, I'm really thankful for that video because I got a lot of tough skin through that, which I, I can't put enough of the value on. <laughs> I think I should probably stop streaming soon. But I have 17 viewers. I want to keep entertaining you all. Hold on. I got to rest my, <laughs> my cords for a minute. Commercial break. Um, I'll come back to the uh, to the comments if you can grab more water. And I just want to say, I'm really privileged right now to have all of your attention. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, if you're if you're finding value in this, I invite you to share with people. But for the most part, I'm I'm so thankful that all of you are here right now. It is somewhat mind blowing that there are 17 people scattered around the globe right now watching me right now. Just mind blowing, Gemma. I'm grabbing water because I've been talking for such a long time. Between I was on a previous live stream that. I like need to generate more saliva, so my sore, my throat's actually getting sore and I need, need water. Commercial break, I'll be back. Or maybe I'll just go to the Hello, humans. I'm just gonna not holy poop 21 people. So, just to give you a little taste of my personality, one of the things I like doing, and I want to make some more videos of this this summer, is just me doing a little bit of dancing. That was not as good as I, it, it feels really good to do that, but I know it doesn't look that good. Woo. All right. I don't even know if I'm going to have the, the stamina to catch up with these comments. They're pouring in, man. Random question, but has a student ever come out to you before? Um, M, 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 uh, yes. Uh, I actually shared a little bit about that earlier. Um, no one's come out to me first. But a couple people have come out to me being like one of the first couple people that they've come out to. I'm just gonna search around for so I'm just gonna search around for some comments. No one to share with. That's all right, Ollie. Hey, that's awesome, Maya. I went to eighth grade social with a guy. And Paul, I totally agree with you from before. You said it's easy to be hateful over the internet, but they would never be hateful in person. It's so true. Like so many people, um, I, I thought Macklemore said it really well in the um, song "Same Love." Um, he said, "Call each other faggots behind the keys of a message board, um, something, but they still ignore it." I, he he just really I don't remember what the words are specifically, but he just did a really great job describing how people act behind the keys of a message board, and it's so true that people are like fearless um, behind the message board. You know, <laughs> this is kind of messed up, but I'll share it with you anyway. Hold on. For those of you that watch Black Mirror, um, you know sometimes in movies like. There's a protagonist and an antagonist. Every once in a while, you, you kind of you're going along with the antagonist, similar to if you've ever seen Dexter on Showtime. Like you're kind of rooting for the guy, despite the fact that he's a serial killer. Part of it is because he's sort of a vigilante and he has a code. Like he doesn't kill people that, in his opinion, don't deserve it. So maybe they're rapists, maybe they're murderers themselves, but you know they're they're killing um, innocent people. 
this movie, uh, <coughs> sorry, this, um, it was an it was the hour and a half, um, episode of black mirror that came out, I don't know, a couple of years ago or something. So if you go on Netflix and you search black mirror, I'm going to give a spoiler alert, but there is an episode where, so black mirror, this is a black mirror, right? Um, oh, you can see it. Uh, so Black Mirror is pretty much all of the mobile devices we see these days. One of the things I really liked about this episode, despite the fact that it felt like innocent people, was someone had weaponized these mini drones and was killing people with them. But this is the uh, – so spoiler alert, uh, just turn the mute. I'll – I'll put in the comments when when you can unmute for if you don't want the spoiler. But I thought, and, and I'm trying to refer to like the power that people feel behind the keys of a message board. Someone weaponized drones to kill people, and the way they did it was they said um, they created a hashtag called um, uh, something like "death by." Oh yeah, it was a death by. Um, so it was like hashtag death by, and then they would put the Twitter user. And so what they would do is anytime, so every day, every 24 hours, they would have this hashtag death by. Whoever got the most tweets with the hashtag would end up, um, would end up at the top of the list. Whoever is at the top of the list of death buys, they would use the drones for to kill. So for example, someone makes a really insensitive comment about a child and they're like a rapper or something. So a bunch of people start tweeting death by to this person. 24 hours later, they're dead. Um, someone like uh, does something to a statue, like just something really inappropriate. People don't like it, it goes viral on, on YouTube and Twitter. A bunch of people tweeted out death by to this person, 24 hours later, dead. At some point, what the creator, and this is the this is the uh, spoiler alert. What the creator of these weaponized drones does is they have a database of all the people that have used the hashtag death by. And what they end up doing is I don't remember what period of time after, but they end up that they, they had this like really deep seated feeling that a lot of people just don't have any experience of being responsible uh, for their actions. They're not held accountable. There's no consequences for being really mean on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And so what they do is every single person that participated in the death by game, every single Twitter user that used the death by hashtag is then killed. So the person ended up wiping out about like half a million people because they decided the the person that weaponized the little drones, they killed all the people that used that hashtag because they wanted to show people that they should be held accountable for their actions, even if it's just little comments. And if you think about it, those little comments kept building up and were causing other people to die. So for part for the participation they had in a game to kill someone, the creator of the game killed them. And, um, you know, that, that person is definitely I, one of the things I liked about the episode is it paints the possibility that a lot of people really are not savvy or like aware of the impact that they can have with their words. And like, if you've seen it for people that have seen 13 reasons why on Netflix, like you can see that online bullying, in-person bullying, that it, it, it's real. Like it can have really devastating effects. Now, 13 reasons why that's like, it's another ball game because of the other things that happen. Um, by the way, I'm done with the spoilers, by the way. So spoilers are over. I'll put that in the comments. Spoilers are over. Um, but I, you know, I, I know 13 reasons why is a totally different ball game, but at the same time, I really, I really feel like that painted the picture of pointing out to people like, God damn, be nicer. Like people are literally ending their lives because people can spread enough hate with social media. And I, I think it's really disgusting that, that we've been taught that that's okay. 
just finished season two. I haven't watched season two. I'm not ready for it yet. I'm really not ready. I last last year and on the Zachary Watson channel, I had I had like a, a reaction to it. Me and my wife went into like a three day depression. Like I was sluggish. Like I couldn't teach right. Like I was so sad um, from watching that. I I literally actually literally fainted because I couldn't. Well, because I'm squeamish and I didn't eat a lot that day, but like after they show the scene of of her in the bathtub like i i passed i literally passed out my my wife i woke up with my head in the lap of my wife and she was like slapping me on the cheek and putting it like a cold bag of uh, ice on my on my forehead um first person you've ever told about identifying i did not know that Gemma. um <laughs> for people say yeah i'm i'm not ready for a season two i can't watch 13 reasons why i'm too sensitive i i totally hear you there tyler king she was effing crazy that's fair Tyler. that's really heavy yeah um you know, I, had, I did not know that and the past self-harm is way too graphic um i'm i'm sorry to hear that tyler and and uh I, I can imagine that would be that much harder because of your own past. So don't watch 13 years by true. Can you meet your wife? Um, e, I would say I would love for you to meet my wife. Um, the one way you can meet her is through one of the, uh, there are a couple of videos that she's actually in. There aren't many of them, but um, she's been unwilling to join on the thing share. I can certainly invite her again. Um, and, uh, there's a very high likelihood she will decline. But uh, for those that want to see my wife, there's a couple of videos in ThinkShare. If you look up, uh, I think I have an, an adventures playlist or bucket list uh, adventures playlist. Um, when we go out to out west for the solar eclipse, she's in, she's in a lot of those. And in the Zachary Watson channel, um, I had her do my makeup so you can meet her through that as well. So not live uh, she's declined multiple times even just tonight um but certainly in the future we'll, we'll convince her someday i think Gemma, oh my god <laughs> yes <laughs> dw guys i'm recovering i'm not sure what dw means but i'm glad to hear that you're recovering i did try and add you on hangouts but it said your profile is private I'm not sure what you mean by hang on. Gemma, um, let's, do you know how to do the YouTube chat thing? Um, I use that quite a bit now. I, I can't watch it. I can't watch it because I don't have Netflix. Ice cubes, that's not a bad thing. It's, it's some heavy stuff. At E or subscribe. I think 13 reasons why I was kind of irresponsibly made, but can also share the message that all of your actions have consequences. You make up looked fabulous in that video. I'm glad to see you watched it. Kind of want to make a giant group chat of everyone here. Hey, Mike, go for it. No one's going to stop you. Do, do means don't worry. Oh, I got you. I'd be down. I'd never watch. So um, one thing I'll comment on that Eminem just said there about being made irresponsibly. So um, as a teacher, one thing that I really got out of watching season one was – I had a much higher um, sensitivity to what was going on in my classroom. So, for example, there's there's that episode where the uh, the athlete guy Zach is sort of picking on her um, because they put in positive messages into like a little box or something. And at some point, she catches him taking the notes out of her hers and like just throwing them away or something. And um, at some point she she realizes that there's nothing in there and she's wondering if someone keeps taking them out and uh she catches him and so it's something small but i'm always reminded of that because you know that's something that happened in a classroom that's something that as a teacher like i'm not necessarily always going to have control over but at the same time um it's something that is possibly preventable. 
So I think one of the really valuable things that I got from watching that series was knowing that I could have an impact in that area for other people um, and knowing that, <laughs> that I could be aware enough of what was going on in my classroom that, that I could make a difference for that. Um, just a really heightened sensitivity for what was going on around me. That was really important. Tried chill link, but can't do so. I'm a sophomore. Kids are still calling each other. I get, yeah, uh, it, it sucks, Tyler. And, and one of the things as a teacher, um, <clears throat> I think I've only heard one student use word faggot in my room. I think they use it as an adjective, like F-A-G-G-Y. I've only heard it once all year. And I think it's because of the flag. I think, I think a lot of people would be fearful of saying something like that in class because I think when you have a symbol sort of that powerful, people really don't do it. Now, it could also be that um, as a whole community that they're more pleasant. It also could be that they're doing it on their breath and I can't hear it. But I would say that I like to think that I've been able to I've been able to impact um, the amount of people saying things like that on a daily basis just by having a flag like that. Yeah, it's in a joking way, but it's really immature. It's certainly immature. I remember when season one came out, a lot of teachers in my school were discussing, always talking to students about being able to talk to them. It's, that's good to hear, Alexander. I think uh, teachers, I, I always think it's interesting that teachers don't try harder to to be on the social, not social, level, but like be on the social media level of their students because one of the really golden opportunities I think teachers miss that I feel like I don't miss because I'm on social media so much and I'm like in the same space as my, my students is there's a lot of opportunity when you are, there's a lot of opportunity for being able to speak to them on their level because i think a lot of students sort of immediately assume ah you're older than me like you don't know what i'm you, you can't relate to me you don't know what i'm about you can't see what i'm thinking and i think because like if teachers are able to stick with their students and learn like like today at the very end of class you know i really try not to do this often but once the very end of class was like a minute left they all start packing up sometimes it just don't use my energy to stop them from gathering at the door. So they're all breaking out their phones, talking to each other. I said, what do you guys use more Snapchat or Instagram? And like everyone answered Snapchat. I was like, Whoa, interesting. Like, cause I kind of thought it was Instagram. And, uh, that gives me one, uh, an interesting fact about my students is that if I wanted to impact them and I wanted to use Snapchat as a social media outlet to impact my students, I would be better off spending more time on Snapchat than Instagram. Also, if I'm making some slides and some word problems, including social media and graphing things, I probably want to use Snapchat instead of Instagram. So I think the, the value in watching things like that, the value in being on the social know of what, your students are up to you have a really golden opportunity to be able to reach them where they're at rather than speaking from what you know which <laughs> might just go straight over their heads um, and I, I think that was the that's the really great thing hearing about teachers really trying to be there for their students saying like hey we're here to talk like I want you to know that you can talk to me it's 3 15 so I should sleep because I have to wake up at six. Ice cubes, thank you so much for being here this long. I, I'm impressed that you stayed on this long. I, I invite you to subscribe if you enjoyed this conversation. You'd like to be around for, for future ones. Ollie, yeah, I should probably go to bed. Hey, I hear you, Ollie. I don't know where y'all are from, but wait, 3.15? So that means it's like, what are you guys, like in Asia or something? 315 so you guys are that's a five hour difference yeah you guys are like what I india I, I don't know where you're all from but thank you for watching this song it's unreal do your students know you're on youtube yes paul they they do know i'm in youtube uh actually a couple students congratulated me uh today on making a thousand subscribers 
Um, there have been a couple that have popped in and out uh, tonight, actually. It sucks that so many teachers don't try and connect with their students. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Tyler. I think at some level I can see where teachers probably get comfortable teaching what they teach and they don't try to change because they get good at it and you know, it creates extra work. But you know, I, I could even imagine a couple of years down the line getting a little comfortable in my role and, and not trying to stay up with the times. But at the same time, because I know I'm going to be staying with YouTube and learning more about my students, I think that'll give me that opportunity to always know what is up. Like if I'm on YouTube daily, just because I'm checking stuff, I'm going to know about the next Kanye rant. I'm going to know about the new album that dropped. I'm going to know about, um, you know, this is America video and I can talk about the virality of it and how it's an exponential curve. And I can talk about that in algebra too. So <laughs> I think teachers probably just get a little bit comfortable once they've taught the same subject for a couple of years, they have their tests, they have their quizzes, they have their word problems. If they have to create more content that creates more work and, I think the first couple of years can be challenging. I I have not spent more than two years out of school yet. Um, I, I spent one year in New Hampshire, two years in Lowell. This is this will be my first complete year uh, where I am now in Massachusetts, and um, and I I can imagine third year into a curriculum be like, oh, I can rest a little bit because like you're constantly making stuff, so. I, I, I can understand where they're coming from and not trying to connect to the students simply because um, one of the challenges is just creating enough for your own content, especially in Massachusetts where academics are like, if you're not, if you're not academic, you're not anything. It's, it's kind of a sad reality of, of this area, but it, it's sad. I agree. Why aren't teachers paid more? Well, my friends, this is what I would say about that. Teachers aren't paid poorly. I'll start off with that. They're also not necessarily making six figures. Here's probably the difference. One is a lot of people think they don't get paid well. So you don't, because people don't think they get paid well, you don't have, you know, top tier possible candidates as teachers going into the profession. Um, Versus NFL, everyone has the perception that they get paid really well, that they do really well because they're on national TV. So everyone wants to be a, an athlete. Everyone wants to go for a D1 scholarship and try to make it. Um, everyone hears that doctors do really well and lawyers do really well, so they go into those professions. So a lot of the people that do it for the money and end up you know, being really good at their craft – might have started because that's where the money was and that's where people figured to go. If we start changing the subject, start changing the conversation, saying, you know, teachers get paid pretty good, you'll start to see more talent enter the job pool of teachers. When you have more talent in there, then you start having more competition, then they start getting paid more because they get more results. And you have a snowball effect of results, better teachers, um, less turnover, better results, better teachers, etc. And you get more and more talent going in, and then the industry sort of grows. So it's not that teachers ought to get paid more. It's that people ought to talk more about the fact that teachers are getting paid fine. Because if we keep assuming that they don't get paid very well, the talent's going to stay low. The more the talent the higher they get paid. So it's an interesting, vicious circle, I think. Sorry, I'm kind of skipping around because it's easy to kind of lose things. What kind of video games do you play? So fun story is uh, I used to be a Madden guy. I used to play Madden like an insane amount of hours, and I'm really glad I stopped because now I do this, which is just a lot better for my future, a lot better for my karma. Just a lot better for the world. Doesn't waste my time. I'm gaining skills. You know, Madden, I'm not really gaining that much skills. And I'm just I'm playing a computer. I might be getting better at the game, but eh, just not doing the world any any good. Um, so I don't talk about it. I used to play Call of Duty, I used to play Halo, I used to play RuneScape, but Madden was really my gym. 
Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming on. I hope you're subscribed so that we'll, we'll see you again in the future. I, I really enjoyed their comments and questions tonight. Morale needs to be improved. Opinions on standardized testing. Oh, boy, Deb. You got, you got eight hours. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really excited that um, our – our faculty has recently been given two book options that we're going to be listening to or reading. Oh, by Maya, or oh, you're saying by them. Um, two book options for per, uh, professional development. One of them is most likely to succeed in talking about how um, we're in an innovation era rather than a knowledge <laughs> knowledge era. And um, one of the cool things that it is going to happen about it is it's going to challenge the idea of standardized testing so i think standardized testing is really useful for states and countries to compare things um, so they can have apples to apples comparisons between schools and students so if a ton of colleges are looking at a ton of students they have sat scores um, if you're from massachusetts mcas scores or um, act scores so the value of standardized testing is for um, industries and for um, what, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, administrations to evaluate apples to apples comparisons. So they have a value. The only problem is I think standardized testing um, is a problem because teachers start thinking, well, I really want to see them do well on these tests because it has a lot to do with their their personal um, worth, which is sad. I, I think if, I would love to see students break past their grades and see that they're worth more than what their grades are. But I think standardized tests are a good, good idea for top level people, but I don't think they do the job of making us better people, better citizens, better learners, better mathematicians or English writers. I think that um, I, I wish standardized tests could kind of go away because I think we could get back to learning instead of test taking. And, um, you know, I, I know I'm a part of the system right now, so I'm sort of part of the problem. But one of the things I want to do as I get better and better at my curriculum is introduce more projects because I think project based learning is the best kind. Similar to, you know, YouTube is a giant project for me, right? I do it every day. I've learned an insane amount about myself about my own habits, about YouTube, social media, virality, um, how to learn about how something works and then work with it, right? Like all the time I've been trying to create viral videos and every once in a while I strike some luck. That's how the Patriots reaction video came to exist because I saw an opportunity and I got lucky and I caught the wave. Um, you know, when The Bachelor came out, that was a fail. I tried making a reaction video about The Bachelor. No one watched it or like 50 people watched it. Um, sorry to those to those 50 people, you're not nobody. Um, so project-based learning, in my opinion, is a better, a better way to learn because you're seeing exactly how those skills are relatable to a task rather than doing the task for the sake of the task. So standardized testing, good for the <laughs> top level people, not necessarily great for the the people doing the testing. Never assume people learn from memorization. True T T sis. I was on drugs during my biology EOC, but I still didn't get past it. <laughs> Same Alex. I'm a visual learner. Yeah. Um, one of the things I love about geometry is I feel like there's a lot of people that have been frustrated with math over the years, and when you have the opportunity to do geometry, you get to use vision way more than you ever have. I test terribly, but I can do classwork well. Opinions on Trump. E oh boy, I have plenty of opinions on Trump. I'm not really gonna share them. I I'll say I'm generally not a fan. Um, I, I've i taught myself to not rant about things that could get me in trouble, so I'm not gonna tonight. Um, what I read that Sarah somewhere, Testing makes people Paul and Dev. Uh, pings on Sarah's testing. Okay, we got to that. Oh boy. <coughs> so it's probably about my bedtime. Um, so 10, 1025. We got proctoring tomorrow, which isn't wasn't isn't too heavy, but um, 
I, uh, I think I think I'd like to take a pause here. Emmanuel, welcome. And I'm so sorry. I'm, I think we're about to. I think we're about to end the night. Well done. Thanks. Your best option answer. Um, best option answer. I'm not sure what you mean by that. So, if you would like to contact me directly and ask more about you know GSA, about coming out, about um, talking with your teachers, about um, gay pride, etc. Feel free to, there's that new YouTube function where you can uh, send someone a link to have private messages. Feel free to send me one. Um, there's a good chance I'll accept it. Um, uh, I hope that some people have subscribed or shared this with other people um, that you that they think would find value to. I would happily, I think I'll probably be making a video that takes all these ideas and puts them into one, which is gonna be very similar to the other video that I made. Um, which is getting to know teachers, taking that relationship to build something greater than that. Um, so I think I might just make a non live stream version of this video, which is giving people ideas for how to start GSA. Um, um, but yeah, I think I'm going to end it here for tonight. So for a bunch of new viewers, I'm so glad I got to meet a bunch of you and, uh, one of the things that some other people know about me in, in this channel is that at the end of the night, um, I love ending it with saying, um, stay weird. And the reason I say that is because I think so many of us do not let our weird selves out. We don't really allow our, our true selves that we, we think we are weird. Um, so if you like this, give it a like. If you didn't like this, give it a dislike. If you want more, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and stay weird, humans. Yeet!